All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here, talking real music in real time for real people just like you right there and just like me here. Journey at Lollapalooza. I'm not sure how much of it you got to see. Uh, I did not watch it live. Um, apparently, Hulu was broadcasting it live. I didn't find that out until almost after the fact. And um, being the family-oriented guy I am, I had some other things going on. I did watch some of the videos that were posted on YouTube. And obviously, the audio quality isn't going to be up to the standard that I'm hoping was put through a mixing board and then put on television via Hulu. Um, so what I'm about to say might be a little harsh and I would have to hear the actual audio from the board and like the live performance audio from Hulu. But I gotta tell you, um, all the clips that I got to see, uh, it was kind of rough at times. Um, and this goes back to some of the problems the band was having in 2017, not with the music side of things. I think the music was really spot on. I think the band itself executed uh, the music well. There are some things that are tuned down. And when you're expecting to hear a note start up here and it starts like right there, I always feel a little pit in my stomach, like that's not how the original is, you know, and this is something that I think a band like Journey needs to overcome. And the reason I say that is because these songs mean so much to so many people. And if you hear it, a song like Don't Stop Believing" or Who's Crying Now or Separate Ways, which ends up, I think, being the hardest song to do. I mean, it just is. It's just a hard song to do. The ending is tumultuous um, and if you're not able to hit those notes and bring it home then this song loses its build up and impact and the ending is so epic that without finishing strong you feel as though you were cheated you know and there are moments during this that I felt a little cheated at least the stuff that I heard um, and look this is why uh, Dean Castronova was brought in. This is why you've got um, Jason Derlotka, and apparently he sang three songs during the set, which is a lot of songs. Uh, Dean sang one. I think um, if Dean sticks with this, which it appears that he's going to be here for the long haul, and it might be him and Narada both playing drums, uh, I think that's smart because when Dean goes to sing, if they allow him to sing more, um, Narada is back there to handle the drums. That might be um, reason number one. Reason number two is Dean knows this material really well and he can kind of drive the band because typically the drummer the rhythm section ends up being the driver and he does that really well, no question about it. But the double threat of being able to sing so well and play drums and know the material cold and you've got a singer let's just be honest who's been really good for this band for many years but it's right at the edge and it was at the edge in 2017 i was hoping you know you rest your voice maybe you do some vocal calisthenics or something i don't know <clears throat> as much about the human singing voice and how some voices like a Mickey Thomas, he can just go on and 71 years old and it's just amazing. And other guys like John Bon Jovi, just gotta call him out. Things didn't go so well when John aged and it's just really weird. Again, it, it's the how you treat your voice, the material. I mean, there are many different things I think that are important to maintaining you know, your vocal skills, but um, this is a tough catalog to sing. You need a front man, but you need somebody who can really bring it home. And there are vocalists out there who could step into Journey. Um, good friend of mine who used to sing with the band Giant. His name is Brian. Um, Brian can handle this catalog. Brian Cole, if you know who I'm talking about. Um, and there are a few others. Uh, Hugo from 
voyage. Uh, he does this stuff in his sleep and he's even got all the nuances and mannerisms down. Now, some people will say, well, we don't want a vaudeville version of Journey. We don't want some guy out there wearing a Steve Perry wig and running around. I don't know. I think your fan base at this point wants that nostalgia. It's not about being this cutting edge rock band. I know they've got new material coming out. That's great. And it's more stuff for the journey diehards to digest. But in the long run and forevermore, it's going to be about the days, you know, 40 years ago when the band was at the top of their game. So again, my review of this from what I've heard, and again, I'd like to hear a better audio uh, recording of this, like the Hulu, what they were broadcasting. I'll try to see if I can find that. Um, I don't have Hulu, I used to. So um, I don't know, maybe somebody can get me a, a code I can punch in so I could just, cause I'm not gonna use your Hulu forever. You know what I'm saying? But if I can listen to the show, um, it might be, it might put things into a better perspective, but right now, um, look, it's their first show. Things might get better. Um, they might get worse, but they might get better because obviously, um, you might be rusty on your first show. Some people said they thought things got better as the show went on. And I don't know the order of the tracks because I, I just clicked on random videos and it, each song had its challenges you know um neil sounds great by the way neil is just happy to be working out there um dean sounded great on drums narada actually sounded good um from everything i could see from a musical standpoint the music especially um that first night where i got to hear uh not lights but um wheel in the sky that was that was really good. The music part of that was just, it was like 1978, you know, it was just really good. So in any event, um, that's my video on this. Sorry about the rambling, but, um, you know, trying to think and talk at the same time is often a challenge. Imagine trying to sing these songs and, you know, try to continuously fill the shoes of the guy whose shoes probably can't be filled. And that would be, of course, Mr. Steve Perry. That is a very tall order indeed.